Hello everyone, thanks a lot for joining me. Uh, I am Elliot Marin, working at Creative Assembly for, uh, for the last seven years now. Uh, and I will have the pleasure to share as many things as I can uh, regarding animation on the Total War Warhammer games. Um, but first, I hope uh, everyone and your families are doing okay in these weird times. Um, uh, hopefully this, the stream will go smoothly as I have plenty of videos to show you. Uh, if you see a two years old storming into the room, handing me Playmobiles, don't worry, it's just it's just my son uh, working from home stuff. <laughs> um, before we start, I will apologize in advance for my broken English. As you can hear, I am French uh, and I'm still learning English. Um, and lastly, just so you don't get your hopes too high on this presentation, um, I have to say that I don't know PowerPoint at all. Uh, so this will be the only nice slide that <laughs> you will have and it's not mine. <laughs> all right, let's go. Mighty Sigma, savior of the Empire, give me strength. For though I dedicated my life to eradicating it, it feeds, it grows, devouring all. There must be a final answer to halt its advance, but the tide of war seems endless. Unthinking bloodlust of the greenskins, the twisted ambitions of the undead. And though the brave dwarven kingdoms stand with us, truly, what hope is it? Against countless horrors that cannot be named, let alone fought by mortal means. And yet all this is nothing before what is to come. It whispers and roars in the dark. It is against us. It is. It is unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I see it now. The beasts that will devour the world. So I'm mainly going to talk about this game um, and more particularly about its animation.
it's always funny to see those super cool edited video with cool over the shoulders of the artist and all. Well, really, what the animator is doing is... <laughs> As you saw, if you know... And if you know animation a little bit, you saw that he rotated the heck out of his animation. But anyway. Okay, so just a quick presentation of the games we are making. Uh, so the Total War franchise started with uh, the historical game, um, with 3K being the latest one. Um, and more recently, the fantasy branch um, with the Total War Warhammer games and all its DLCs. Um, um sorry yeah uh, and then uh, alien isolation released on all platforms um and more recently by the aliens teams um halo, halo wars 2 for microsoft uh and a lot more as you can imagine um and hey we released uh the last release we did was um uh, the warden and the punch um uh in lockdown so that's quite a success in itself and uh, check how cool it is where is he <laughs> it has been many years but this city will never be safe not whilst he is still out there That's cool, huh? So this one is a lot of fun. Uh, so well done, team. All right. So um, the studio is based in Horsham, uh, a nice and peaceful small town. Uh, Horsham's motto is "Time well spent," which okay. Let's talk really quickly about something a bit boring but really important: uh, work-life balance. So basically, it's doing this daily or uh, regularly that it's going to make you a good artist um, and for me one of the great perks of living locally is that it gives me just that a good work-life balance it's like cycling just 10 minutes and i'm at work going back home at lunchtime to see my son sleeping a bit longer uh, returning home a bit sooner you know all of these things means that I know it sounds boring, but it's it's really important in, in the long run and you are in for the long run if you want to be good at animation. <laughs> um, anyway, enough with the boring stuff and all the trailers. Uh, let's really get into it. Uh, so part uh, because as I said, I'm French. Uh, what is Warhammer? Uh, yes, it's a tabletop game. Um, you buy your miniatures, you assemble them, you paint them, then while reading a very thick rule book, you throw a couple of buckets of dices and you measure stuff with funny ruler. Um, really, it, it's kind of boring. Like You paint some random dudes with two colors, nothing too crazy at all, just dudes in armor, 
sometimes with guns, sometimes with funny hats. Yeah, no, really, as you can see, it's plain chicken. <clears throat> yeah, of course I'm joking. It's banana. Look at this crazy thing. They've got three mechs. Badass Minotaurs with the badass pickaxe. Even more badass orcs. A crazy elf lady riding a crazy beetle. Demons with wings. This guy with insect wings. Knights riding dragons. Look, there's even a baby dragon here. Crazy giant spiders with a bunch of goblins up top. A stone horn. Half stone, half horns. Elves riding a noodle dragon. Dinos with lizards on top. Crazy giant Egyptian statues. Two-headed griffins. More orc badassery. Harry Potter stuff, but better. Gory stuff. Raptors pulling a one-wheeled chariots. Ghosty chariots. Another chariots. More lizards riding dinos. This three-headed monstrous quadruped. What's this? I don't know. Did you see it had like a rat? like tail i don't know what it is mongols have vampire have zombies with wings crazy beastmen's they even got kaijus this thing did you notice it had two in tiny insect legs on his belly uh, squeaks jump uh squeaks jumping all around uh ridden by goblins crazy giant flying beasts ridden by spiky knights with a sword on fire but did you notice the beast had three different heads and two tails? This abomination with all these heads, arms and legs powered by a weird machine on his back. Yes, it has six limbs per side, so 12 limbs to walk. Oh, and yes, it's a wheel under his bum because why not? And also, did you notice it had a drill coming out of one of his mouth? The fins of Slanish with backward legs. Uh, Claws, a row of boobs, and a row of pectorals. Yes, you heard correctly. And let's not even talk about bipeds. I'm not showing you the back of this one. <laughs> okay, okay. So I told you I was joking. It is indeed a crazy universe, but we'll come back to that later. And hey, you know what else is cool? Total War. So now that we've seen what's Warhammer, let's have a look at what's Total War and what are its limitation requirements. So part two, what's Total War and animation requirements. So it's strategy game. And when you Google strategy games, you see that in all those pictures, the camera is very high in the sky to give you that bird's eye view. Um, and adding Total War to the search bar, you can see that it's also true for our games, um, with the difference that in a few of those images, the camera can also be lower, much lower and very close. But we'll talk about that in a bit. So Total War games are combining two types of games. Uh, first, you've got the campaign map. Uh, this one is a, view, uh, is a view of the combined map of both Warhammer 1 and 2. Uh, and in games, um, in game, it looks like this. To begin our tour of the old world, we've set up some scripted flyby cameras here. Now, these won't be in the final game, but they do enable us to show off the campaign map in all its glorious detail. We're now turning south and heading into the Badlands, and you can see in these green skin settlements that there's just an enormous amount of cultural detail on show. Over the marshes of madness now and past the Pillar of Bone, which is a magical fulcrum and forms a sort of epicenter for the winds of magic. So if you have a battle in this region, your spellcasters will have tempestuous levels of magic to play with. Up into the southern reaches of the World's Edge Mountains now, and we're getting firmly into dwarf country, an area in which the greenskins are eternally encroaching. Now there's a dwarf master engineer there, one of the dwarf hero types, so he doubles as a campaign map agent and a warrior in battle. And as we head north, you can really see the change in environmental lighting and the skies, which really alters the atmosphere across different areas of the map as you move around. OK, here's Karaza Karak, the dwarfing capital, with Thorgrim and his army there guarding the gates. There's a huge amount of incidental detail in the campaign map too, like these peak-spanning bridges. Testament to dwarf and engineering prowess. All right, so it's looking cool. And in this mode, you play a turn-based strategy uh, and resource management game. 
Uh, you develop your cities, do some diplomacy, make war or peace, etc., etc. You basically try to expand. Um, so from this campaign mode, as you can see here, uh, you can enter the, the battle mode, uh, which basically lets you play real-time battles. Um, and this is basically the action mode where you control a bunch of units and tell them to do stuff and hopefully they listen to you. And this is how it looks in game. So as you can see here, you've got control over your units. Uh, you basically give them order. You can move them, order them to stand their grounds, group them, change formation, tell them to fire, send spells, or go to melee. And very quickly, it begins to look like this gigantic bar fight in melee. Yeah. <laughs> So I'll mainly uh, talk about battle tonight, um, and let's start with the camera. I love this video so much. It was made by fun, and uh, all that you saw, it's all gameplay stuff and, and uh, runs live. But really, this is how a lot of players play. Um, so we have to take this into account. And not only talking about how polished an animation uh, is or should be, but mainly how to design your animation to make sure that it's working in this view before anything else. So that's very, very important for us. So to come back on what I was saying earlier, you can uh, play from quite far, uh, quite close, up to very close. So it obviously means that we have to take into account all of that, like I just said, to design animation. Um, side note, there, there is an auto resolve button. Um, so it basically skips the battles when you are in campaign mode. Um, uh, and there are some players that barely even play uh, the live battles and only do auto-resolve. 
Uh, so all the thought process and effort we put into crafting our beautiful animations, they basically never see, but <laughs> that's cool. No offense taken. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm not a designer, so I'll go over the main design constraint quickly. Um, one thing to keep in mind, uh, when you take all the different type, all the different type of units, we've got uh, small, normal, medium, giants, cavalry, flying, war machine, lords, heroes, etc., etc. You can imagine there are a lot of rules and constraints. Uh, nonetheless, um, those are the main rule of thumbs that I could think of. So for attacks, uh, some important timings are uh, the length of the animation, uh, which is four second max. Um, Again, ultimately, it's a case by case, uh, and the law of physics dictates things too. So, for example, giants are much slower, so there is some there is some leeway. Um, impact positions uh, should ideally happens before two seconds. Again, unless it's physically impossible for a character. Um, uh, travel distances. So ideally, an attack is returning to the start position to maintain the unit's formation in combat. Uh, if we don't, they can either slowly gain ground against the enemy or actually get surrounded more easily. So we can either make the unit OP or nerfing it on only because of animation. So we have to be very careful about that. Um, uh, impact should cover front area before anything else. Um, and this elf animation is summarizing things for you. So that's basically the perfect perfect animation for a designer. <laughs> uh, but we do have turns attacks, um, most of the time useful for giants. Uh, turns attacks should end with the character turn toward where he was attacking, or sometimes unit can get kind of stuck into playing this animation and expose their bugs. Um, especially <laughs> don't do this if you don't want designers to disable your beautiful animation from the game. Uh, so for the little story, that's an animation I did. As you can see, it's it's polished and all, and yeah, it's not in the game because designer removed it for the reason that I just said. It would have need to turn 180 degrees at the end of this animation to be able to be in the game. My bad. Uh, combos. Um, relax on the combos. Our designers generally wants one impact positions. Um, but in reality, this is not happening. <laughs> uh, match combats, uh, so it's a bit complicated and comes with his, uh, with um, its own set of rules. Um, uh, but design usually don't get involved uh, for match combat. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about match combat later. Uh, locomotion, we have to work closely with designers on this one. Uh, first, we work with real speed and have to make sure they travel the correct speed using meters per second. Um, next, uh, designers need to respect the Warhammer law uh, on unit speed. Um, and then our maps are big, but some very agile or big units, uh, for example, uh, dinos, griffins, etc., can't run or use their coolest, coolest gates sometimes. Um, otherwise, galloping at full speed, they will basically cross the battlefield in a blink of, in a blink of an eye. Um, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about this uh, later too. So kind of link to my last point in a way, but let's now talk about scale. Uh, you can easily find some clickbaity video with some clickbaity titles and clickbaity thumbnails about thousands of units fighting. Uh, and this is indeed a big part of the Total War franchise. franchise. Um, here you can see some huge battles in, in, uh, in a historical title. Uh, indeed, we can have 10,000 of people fighting. So scale of the battles um, with a lot of units on screen is definitely one thing to consider. But now uh, let's talk about uh, scale of characters. I miss animation so much, I have to do it in PowerPoint. <laughs> Uh, so scale of characters. So this is a big thing in Total War Warhammer games and um, a big difference between an historical title and a fantasy 
uh, title. So um, we've got all the sizes, basically take your pick uh, from very small to very huge. And, cool. Uh, so again, kind of link, kind of, kind of linked, sorry, but um, we've got a lot of different unit types. So to keep things re relatively, relatively simple uh, and use um, the High Health uh, Army roster as an example. Again, it will vary greatly between factions, but mainly you've got um, melee units or infantry, then ranged unit or missile infantry, cavalry and chariots, um, ranged cavalry or missile cavalry and ranged chariots, war machines, artillery, um, and finally, you've got lords and heroes, and lastly, giants, monster, etc. The cool stuff. Uh, all those units type um, come with, of course, different weapon types: so sword, axes, dual weapons, two-handed sword, two-handed axe, spears, lances, shields, etc., etc. This list isn't exhaustive at all. Okay, and then you take all those type of units uh, with all this, those different weapons and you also add different scale to them. So very small, small, medium, large, very large. And again, this list isn't exhaustive. So you can easily imagine how easily the list of animation are growing uh, um, exponentially. Uh, obviously, if we take another faction, uh, for example, here, the Lizardmen, the rooster will be, will be and feel very different. Uh, this is why this project is so much fun to work on. It never gets boring, basically. So now to let you digest all of this, a bunch of screenshots uh, to represent a good example of a few variations that we have and all the visual noise that it can generate. Uh, same here. And those are pics from, uh, from Warhammer uh, miniatures. You see, it's, it's very appropriate, right? <laughs> So that's why we made it. Uh, I would uh, I would also add in the animation requirements uh, players' expectation. Um, yes, people are expecting um, nice animation from us, uh, and I can guarantee that the animation standards are now quite high, and we are constantly pushing that bar higher. Um, so now now that we know more about those two licenses, we've got a few things to be mindful of. Um, for animation when we merge those two products together. Um, so you remember all those miniatures I, I, I showed you uh, in my What's Warhammer section. So now uh, they must move. So first thing to consider is readability. Uh, you see all these crazy and very nice details makes it somewhat very contrasty and uh, a bit hard to read sometimes. Um, a lot is happening here, um, as you can see. Um, so not necessarily the most clear at first glance. For example, this guy versus <laughs> this guy. Um, these images should be a bit closer to the things we learn in our animation courses, right? Uh, appealing poses onto appealing character, very clear and readable stuff you understand at first glance. I mean, good, clear poses makes you understand straight away what you are looking at and what's happening. Oh, perhaps more importantly for us, what is going to happen. So coming back to this example uh, and drawing over it, um, you can see the pose itself is actually quite clear, right? And granted, it's, it's not fair to compare a 3D model, especially, yeah, I mean, a, a picture of a 3D model with a 2D illustration, but hopefully this will just get my point across. Um, so when hiding the model and showing only the lines, you can see the pose itself is clear. Uh, and you could argue that they are both as clear. Uh, but it's not the pose that isn't clear. It's all the details added on top. Um, and so this is some something we consider very carefully. And although our character, our team are the best for this, uh, we still have to work very closely together sometimes uh, for uh, this type of things. Um, also, guess what? Miniatures don't move. And I'm sure you had guessed. <laughs> so second things to consider, uh, when we have to work on characters like this, for example, uh, what are our options? How would this move? How do you make a walk cycle for that? Well, something amongst those lines. And then obviously here it doesn't move, but when it, when it uh, walks, uh, it just translates forward. So 
we fake it. <laughs> There's not much choice. Or this adorable creature uh, pulling this chariot, the gold beast. Um, you can tell when they designed it, they really wanted to emphasize that this beast would charge into the enemy and do a lot of damages with the, the, the boob horn, or whatever you want to call it. And um, for me, when I received this rig, I was like, mm, okay, so to me, this reminds me of a gorilla. And I, I really wanted to do a, a knockoff walk uh, with him. So uh, I looked at Hape. Uh, sorry apes reference and obviously as you can tell with this young gorilla apes have um these very asymmetric walks which with those huge horns are impossible basically so this is the walk that i did for this character uh, and as you can see that even even with an, an hybrid walk the horns are sealed very quickly in the way and you can also see that the big the big shoulder pads are also very much in the way too. <laughs> That's another thing. And there are plenty of other examples, like very big and long blades on the body makes it really hard to use other weapons, especially two-handed weapons. Uh, huge shoulder pads makes it hard to raise arms. Um, these lizards that always, always have to be shown with this book. That's very important. The tiny book on with the lizard, the small chameleon, uh, on it uh, it has to be shown always with it so uh, how do you do do this um yes this thing here has to go uh to melee in our game um and this beauty having melee weapon but not a lot of space to use them with all those legs um that's obviously there are plenty more of examples that was just uh the first one i could find and sometimes it's it's the opposite um characters that should move too much or have too many features that's also something tricky um for example the the help it abomination is a great ex example of a character that has a lot of features it's got 12 limbs in total like i said eight eight limbs that are in contact with the ground to make him move um and all different too so you've got um oh. I wasn't sure where the other videos were not playing. Uh, so you've got a mix of crab legs, hands, feet, a wheel, a worm like belly. And let's not talk about all the features it's got on his torso, like several heads, several arms. This thing really is the perfect Frankenstein monster. Uh, it was a lot of fun to animate though. Um, or the griffin. Um, so here you see three different sized one. Uh, they are almost all sharing their animations, but look how slow they have to walk. And this is a direct constraint of our gameplay. They can't go too fast or they will cross the battlefield very fast. Um, so it is sometimes really hard to use their cooler gates, their, their cooler, uh, gates as a result of this constraint. And next example is even more flagrant um, on their runs. Um, how can you be badass while trotting? <laughs> Uh, if I tell you to close your eyes and picture a griffon or a lion running for a cool epic scene in a movie, you're probably not thinking of them doing a trot. I'm sure you're thinking of this, right? Um, yeah, you're thinking of the one in the middle. Um, and that's that's what I am thinking personally, but this is the charge animation. And the charge animation, well... It's only seen for a couple of seconds. The, the the most seen gates will be the run. So it is sometimes a little bit frustrating, um, but this is a very important balancing constraint. Um, so that's a direct result of working with all those different scales. Uh, and those are just a bunch of other uh, slow gates. Sometimes it really helps sell the weight, like on the giant on the right. Um, or it's working perfectly on the Necrofex Colossus, the giant ship mech, um, or even a giant crab. But sometimes it's just too... Ah, sorry. Sorry, next slide by mistake. Uh, sometimes it's just too damn frustrating, like with the giant lizard. Oh, I mean, look at how slow uh, that dragon walk is. It is almost comedic in a way, the one in the middle. <laughs> Uh, he, and nothing wrong with the animation itself, it's just obviously the gait that does not fit too well the type of character. Um, but there's no other way around. Um, 
his his run feels much better though um although it's 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 a walk uh but uh yeah but um it's a dragon so he must he must be fast when he's flying right so that feels much better so all of this but mainly spikes <laughs> sorry i went too fast <laughs> yes warhammer is very spiky so we have to live with some um intersections <laughs> um, yeah just deal with it so part three um how we do it um so our animation system I'll go over quickly our animation system. Then I will talk about our workflow and let's start with our animation system. So I'll talk a little bit about our tools too. And let's start with Maya, uh, where I'll show you uh, in a little demo in the next slide, um, a little bit of our tools and how we export our animations. Okay, uh, so this is the Maya tools demo. So here you can see we've got a project manager uh, in there. Uh, you can just load the rigs. Here I've got nothing showing because I don't want to leak anything. <laughs> I'm just scared. But yeah, like it's very handy little tool. You've got you set your project. You've got recent files. You load the rigs, the animation and stuff. Here you can see we've got it shows 345 files. So 345 rigs which is a lot. <laughs> uh, so here uh, you see how, how Maya looks really. Uh, so um, here it's playing a command idol too. I will just try to show you how when to export the animation, what the process of exporting, sorry. We've got the layers, the anime layers, obviously that's in all Maya, the um, uh, Total War um, shelf. So those are all a few of our tools, I would say. I, I will not go over all of them because I don't have the time, but retargeting, batching, secondary dynamics, things like that. Um, it's great. The main one we use is the animation tool here. So that's this tab here. So I'll just go over very, very quickly. Um, but um, yeah, it's just like a bunch of handy tools, um, like similar to small scripts that you would have. Um, some rig tools, so uh, a really handy one, which is the align anim root button. We, we really need to use that. So the anim root is this thing, you know, it's just like, it's the collision box. It's just, it's what animates the uh, collision box. Um, uh, or rather what the uh, collision box use as uh, information. Um, so yeah this this is a tool to animate this um then you've got yeah like props and things like that so this dino doesn't have any props i mean props we usually are like sword shield this sort of stuff he this guy doesn't really have weapons uh he has a lot going on though <laughs> and then this is the anim library so here again as you can i'm sure you can guess i had to show only a few things to not to to um, uh, leak anything um uh, yep, then the export uh, nodes, so those are created depending on the projects you're working on and stuff, then you just press that button and it will just export your beautiful animation. And that's it really. Last, lastly, I guess we have a lot of little tools here, um, a lot of little things really, but uh, that's the main thing you want to you wanna check is the little scripts uh, and uh, yeah, the exporting. Um, the exporting button. So uh, that's it for the Maya demo. Okay, so here was a quick capture of how our Maya looks with my rubbish commentary on top. Um, so now our animation editor. Um, okay, so welcome in the animation editor. This is it, a bit cramped here because we usually, we usually work with dual screens, but for the sake of the capture, this is it. So. Um, you've got the viewport here, um, you've got the tables here, the tabs at the top, um, uh, the models in there uh, linked to every tables, and here this is it, you've got the slots system that I was talking about. Um, 
so here it's playing the stand animation uh, don't worry too much if you notice some popping here it's because they are playing their own animation they are unsynced uh, but they, there you go you've got all the slots we've got so it's like I would I would say it's roughly I don't know maybe four, an average of like 40 to 60 animations uh, per character it depends um, uh, so if I had to plug my animation that I just exported earlier I would just drag and drop it here so the animation file I would just drag and drop it from the window explorer um, and then so already here it's 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 it has been done obviously it's been shipped <laughs> this faction has been shipped so uh, so yeah here I can just check that everything is working fine um, and this is the timeline where we add um, metadata so on command idle you don't have metadata well just one but it's for a special case um, so if I just play um, whoop, wrong attack, if I just play this attack for example, you will see that you've got some metadata in there, impact position, splash, and everything to just communicate the game, uh, all the good informations. And as soon as this is plugged and everything has been added, then that's it. You just save and export and that should be in the game. Um, I mentioned the tabs, uh, well there you go, uh, as soon as you press change tab you've got different characters and stuff with their own table and everything. So yeah, um, that's it really, uh, that's it for the demo. Okay, uh, so that was a very quick tour of the anime editor, but as you can, as you can, um, as you saw, uh, you you had a glimpse of the slots and the metadata that this is the main system that we use. Uh, so now let's talk a little bit about how you would go and test your animation in game um, using the the our debug functions. Okay, so welcome in one of our test map. Uh, this one is the flat one, as you can tell. Um, so this is the enemy line. I will just make sure that they don't start firing at each other. For the sake of pl uh, placing them, I will just place them behind the, the yellow line. And this is my stegadens. So I loaded up a bunch of stegadens. This is what you want to do, really. Uh, have a look at all the variations you've got and everything. So for the demo, we'll just have a look at the feral stegaden because it's going to be easier to focus on the model rather than this one, which has a lot of stuff happening on his back. Uh, whoops, I right click. Uh, so here you can see this is our debug menu. So I'm not going to go over too long, but um, I've got few uh more options than uh the random player uh mainly this one ignore deployment border and show history which basically is gonna be oh i need to show the lines uh this nice debug um text here which tells me information about which slot it's playing which uh animation it is how long it's been playing this animation for and the blending time and everything like that so what i'll do is I'll just take this guy and put him much closer to the enemy line because ultimately we just plugged um, a combat idle. So to trigger combat idles, you need to put them either uh, in combat or either closer to the enemy line to be able to change stance. So now what I'll do is I'll just start battle <clears throat> and you will see as soon as I do this, he should stand, uh, change, sorry, change stance, which he just did. So now it's in combat ready mode. So what I'll do is I'll just pay attention to that list and there you go we are lucky uh, as soon as he starts playing combat idle 2 so now you can see uh, let me show you here is is showing combat idle 2 uh, I will just slow down the game so much clo much slower than what the player can do the player only has control here we've got much uh, much um, slower control or faster uh, what I'll do is I'll just go uh, quarter because I'm talking at the same time uh, and just pay attention to the animation making sure that there is no glitch or anything weird happening and it seems fine. So when I say glitch, I mean when we export animation sometimes in between frames or things or during the converting phase, sometimes you can have like Hula filter issue that are just happening 
here it's not the case, so it's fine. And also bear in mind, it's a fake test, so everything is fine because we already released this key, this chap. <laughs> so here is playing it again, as you can see. So it's it's kind of random. I don't have a say right now of saying play this idol, please. Um, oh, you don't have to say please as well. But um, we do have a command option that says play this animation and loop it or whatever on command but the thing is it will kind of not be how the real uh, 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 game environment so um, that's not how player will see the game really so I always prefer to do this so yeah you do lose a little bit of time but uh, at least you see you see really what the player is going to see. So now you can see he's playing it again so I don't have to look at the an uh, animation list but um, but yeah, I can tell. So what I'll do next usually is I will just test my animation in the most context possible. So here we are lucky that it's only an idle, so we can just wait and see. But um, yeah, I will just like check it in all the views and yeah, it's looking fine and everything. So uh, I'm quite happy with that. So that would be uh, how I would test uh, an animation in game. Uh, that's the very short version. <laughs> Normally, if let's say you have an attack or something, you would test it again a lot of different infantry, uh, a lot of different units, sorry, to make sure that it's working in the most cases possible. And if there is anything you can do to make it look better. But um, for an idol, that's mainly what you are looking at. So uh, there you go for this test. Okay, so that's it. And now, uh, lastly, I wanted to touch on briefly about our combat system starting with uh with the match combats and another demo for the match combat editor so this is it the same tool and here you can see you've got a slightly different thing uh i can't really show too much again or oh, i'm afraid to kind of leak stuff uh, which i see i will definitely not be happy about so <laughs> Uh, yeah, that basically match combat is basically that. It's like uh, we see it as like a kill animation. Uh, so we usually do big versus small because this is what has the most chance of being seen in game. It creates a really nice wow moment as well, where suddenly the player will just see that cinematic animation. Uh, that is 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 nice. Um, but yeah, that's it really. Um, we also have a very very few. Um, I mean, the problem with match combat is that we are artists and um, we've got a lot of ideas and a lot of, we're dreaming, we dream a lot. Uh, so obviously for us, those characters, they are all, you know, just, we just want to play with them and we just, we just have a lot of ideas and things. So this one, for example, is like the other way around where the guy is killing a, a troll. Um, we wish we would be able to do this more, but those match combat are very, very costly. Actually, this makes me think of um, the giant versus giant. Uh, so um, I, I'm not going to talk too long about those, but yeah, same. It's part of the things where we were say we were as a team because uh, we stayed uh, over time to do those animations. Um, that's always things we wanted to do, and we thought, okay, like. Uh, we really need to do this so it was just like uh no one asked us to do this we just we just had fun it was a great learning experience as well and i can say that from this because this is definitely too costly we've got too too much of a back catalog to fill and those animations are very time consuming and bespoke so ultimately they are very very costly to do uh but we are working on a on a alternative system a bit a bit more um optimum i would say for our game and uh, the amount of of content we've got um but um yeah yeah it's um it's 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 really fun it's it's the most fun thing you can you can work on really um uh it's it's just it's just a lot of fun um so yep yeah, uh, that's it really i won't show you how to plug those because it's very boring <laughs> Uh, the, only the animation is cool. The the thing I would say though is just pay attention to like how many uh, victims we've got. Um, so those are all the variations we have to do of the same animation only because well there are a lot of different victims that they can be played. So yeah, it's very very time consuming. Cheers. 
Okay, um, and I wrote uh, Unsynced uh, as title, which doesn't really make sense for you, but I know there are a lot of players that keep referring to older historical titles, animation as the best, and wish new as Total War title had, for example, Shogun's 2, um, Shogun 2's match, uh, combat system, sorry, uh, which basically was match combat only. Uh, so just to touch on that very quickly, Shogun 2 or Rome 2 or historical projects in general have one skeleton, like one human skeleton on Warhammer. You had a glimpse earlier, we've got over hundreds, I mean, we've got, yeah, over 300 uh, different skeletons and, and counting. So coming from ROM2, we, we had to simplify a great deal our animation system. Um, so this project is unfortunately too big to do much combat only. It's, it's simply impossible. So now I will touch a little bit about our workflow. Um, so it's a first pass, second pass, Polish workflow. Um, first pass, um, it's basically, we start with research and, and gathering. Uh, it's it's not always possible, but when it is, it's always good to know in advance what, what your next task is going to be. And when you do, uh, start to basically start to make a headspace for it. So you don't necessarily want to uh, start gathering a reference at this stage, depending on how close you are to start the, the task. But it can just be starting to think about it to, to let the creative process warm up a bit sometimes. You know, things take time. Um, so on day one of the actual task, yep, now this is definitely it. Uh, Pinterest, YouTube, Vimeo, BBC, Motion Gallery, etc. Anything um, to, to help you find reference or inspiration. But I, I personally have a few Pinterest boards that obviously I look on for videos and stuff. But when I can't or when I, am, I, have, I have to deal with a tricky or when I used to have to deal with a tricky character and I had no clear idea at first on what to do um this bo this pinterest boards helped me you know put ideas in my in my head like seed seed, seed ideas um this helps me a lot when i i don't really have a clear vision of what i want to do and in this one it's basically stuff i either simply like or that sparks any sort of ideas in my head when i see it so it's super random and personal but it's very useful for me it's, it, it just somehow jump starts my creativity for example uh i'll try to explain a bit what what goes in my mind um i see i see this illustration here uh the one with the the, this one um and i don't know when when i see it i immediately picture the dude with the afro to just smash things with his bat and then ultimately he smashes the basketball uh of his of his croco friend and um you know onto onto something else so it's it's super random and that's obviously very personal and somehow violent too uh, but if i am animating a character with the bat or a mace or something you know and, I, and i'm on the lookout for some inspiration then that that can be that can be that can be it so stuff like that um uh, starts you know to populate my mind with ideas already so not sure if that makes sense but uh, it's just a, a tip so i encourage you to gather stuff that that you like and to watch them often this is this is going to help you for any type of projects you have, by the way, pro or personal. So anyway, it's very random, but... And then I've got another board um, uh, in which I only gather cool poses. Obviously, this one is a lot more useful immediately. Uh, so yeah, that's that's another one. So yeah, anyway, regarding research, anyone has his own work for right? But this is what works for me, but in general, like learn about anatomy before you start, learn about how it moves, uh, see how it can move and what are the max range for, you know, limbs, like how how far does a spine bend on this type of animal uh, in, in its most uh, extreme poses and stuff like that. This will already help you a lot. And you have to, you don't have to be an expert. I mean, depending on how many animation you have to do, but you have to, yeah, you have to have a good idea of what you're doing um research weapons and how different web uh type of weapons are used uh you need to learn about all these before you start so uh law and kickoff um same we check the miniatures we have uh, tons of miniatures in the office um 
so not not this one <laughs> uh, so we can hunt the 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 one we are looking for and really analyze it to get the essence of of it or try to at least um then we read we read the warhammer law uh look looking for specific keywords and and things that they used uh, for example you know striding across the battlefield like a god of war evokes a completely different image than slithering in from the shadows right so it can be good to pull three words or adjectives um you think would define your character well for example graceful proud and drilled uh versus like will rather than versus we look very different than savage intelligent and offensive um so write those words down and regularly double check that your character is matching these words uh if you can't guess who they are um the first one was the high, high elves and the second one the lizard men um this uh, is also when we have kickoff meetings with designers where they tell us um, how they see this character and how it will be played. Uh, we mainly learn about our constraints in those meetings. Um, this is also usually a nice brainstorming moment when anyone can throw ideas. Um, Poor Oscar. Oscar is uh, is or is part almost part of the animation team. He is our design designer of Warham, um and uh, one of our designer, and he must he must keep up with our crazy ideas, and he has the most difficult job balancing all of this content. <laughs> so next, uh, we already started doing this with the kickoff, but we speak with the riggers because they have. Um, already thought about how it should move. Uh, we speak with the modelers because they have already spent a lot of time with that character thinking about every little details. Um, we are also communicating a lot with the animation team too. So we ask for reference, ideas, opinions, etc. constantly. And next we've got uh, planning. So this is obvious and it could well be the first thing we actually have to do, but figuring out how long you've got for your task and plan things accordingly. So this sounds like a really dumb uh, advice, but you have to get an idea before you start, because if the task is 10 days long, it's going to be very different than like a 30 days task, for example. Also, there's a saying, right? That no matter how long you've got, 20% um, of your animation tasks time should be planning uh, and 80% should be animating. Uh, planning means, of course, reference, th thumbnailing, etc. You, you want to try to avoid as much as possible the unknown. Being in the unknown zone is when you lose time. Uh, so next, we've got uh, testing. Obviously, you want to test your characters, slap some poses, try different attitudes, extreme poses. And while you do that, you will also familiarize yourself with the rig. You will also see very quickly what sticks to your character. That That is very important. Sometimes you have a preconceived idea of, of what is going to work. And actually, once you have the, 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 the rig, the final rig with the final proportion and texture and things, Sometimes it actually, it, what you had in mind is not necessarily working best. So yeah, that's something you have to deal with on the fly. And uh, r and uh, I wrote kind of because it, it's always very tied to R&D characters, unfortunately uh, for us, but it is very rare, uh, I should say, when an animator goes in, in the wrong direction, we usually can tell pretty fast. And as far as I remember during the whole warmer, project uh it only happens to us once that as a team we got kind of stuck all together trying something and um if you can't guess uh tomb king that was tomb king it was very tricky because we decided we were going to try to basically do statues so uh, no one told us statues does, does not move <laughs> uh, at the end it was one of the our most successful dlcs but uh, yeah it, it was a struggle but really, when you're doing your blocking, um, you have to try stuff. Like this is the best f 
phase of the creation process I find where your mind just flows freely about what type of attack or idols you're going to do. Um, don't just start for the sake of starting. No, no, no. Take a step back, check all the infos you've gathered and try to find a good and fun good and fun, fun ideas like tell yourself that you're gonna make it exciting and cool uh, so it's it's easy to say right but uh I'll, I'll be giving you um plenty of tips in a minute so obviously during this whole process we test things in game constantly um it's it's a constant back and forth between maya and the game so again go crazy or go home this is the time to prototype have fun and, and, and try stuff. So try to find what's working with this character, what makes him cool, uh, the ideas that are the clearest at selling a character and making an action cool and memorable are the one you should keep. So very quickly, um, uh, very quickly and, sorry, very quick and rough blockings are, are, are enough. Like throw the rest in the bin, it, it's part of the creative process. Uh, and at any stages of your animation, action has to be clear, readable, and memorable. That's very important, especially if you recall that the camera thing I was, I was saying, this is very important. This is a phase where we have to be open-minded, like your animation might have a lot of retakes or completely change or even be rejected. It shouldn't be a big deal, like if you recall the animation I showed you that was cut, uh, that was my mistake because I shouldn't have... I shouldn't have done that animation at that stage um, before it was rejected. So you see, it should have been much rougher than this. Uh, even though for this animation, the story is a little bit different, but you get my point. Um, yeah, it, it shouldn't be a big deal if your animation is rejected or if you have retakes, um, because yeah, rough blocking shouldn't take too long to change or, re or redo. So uh, that should be part of it. And once uh, the... Basically, we call the first pass completed when the character has, uh, has all the animation required. Uh, the game doesn't crash or asserts about your character. You tried all the ideas possible and you only kept the best one. And you are in a position, uh, in a, sorry, <laughs> you are in a position to just polish what you have. Uh, so second pass now. But before that, usually there is a slight pause. We are waiting for design to review our first pass. Um, and when they've reviewed things, usually it's only a thing or two that needs tweaking. Uh, and then we can move on to the second pass, um, uh, blocking plus, basically refining your blocking really. So some tips could be start with the root, then work each part of the body up uh, or down, uh, focus on arcs, timing and spacing first with clear staging in mind. And polishing next is probably more useful for giants, like now is a good time for fingers, toes, pass, facial poses, etc. I say good thing for giants because obviously when you saw all the different sizes and scales, a very, very tiny goblins will need less polishing than a, a giant purely because of this, the, the screen space it takes um, uh, once in the game. Uh, so yeah, like I said, fingers, etc. or secondary animation dynamic, the secondary animation, the, the, which are yeah, like clothes, hair and things like that. Um, and then proper polish. Um, again, usually there's another pose, another pose here, um, this, this phase, usually comes after a few months of having done other stuff. Uh, so this is really polishing. So <laughs> really, really polishing. So we remove or replace animations that we don't feel like are working anymore. This can sometimes happen, uh, happen after a few months. Um, and what's we, what, what we really want to keep, we, we, we polish here and there. So, um, uh, yeah fine tuning things basically so uh, obviously we also fix anything that needs fixing uh, so um, yeah like bugs and things like that or functionality sometimes since we kind of we don't work all at the same time but it can happen sometimes so sometimes you are blocked you have to you're blocked by another team you have to wait a little bit so yeah uh, polish the the end polish is basically the 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 final so there you have it. It's, it's a bit complicated, I know, but to sum it up, uh, basically, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so now I'll, 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 um, I'll show you examples. Um, so what I'll do is I very, 
very quickly show you my um, uh, my whole progression for a hand key character. Um, and then I'll show more example of how we tend to do things. So side note though, I started animating this character and then I uh, became lead of the project. So uh, Spence kindly helped me out finishing this character, uh, basically polishing and creating new stuff. But what I, I'll show you next is, um, yeah, it was my blocking and then he finished the, the animation at the end. So when I start, um, I start by checking the concepts and uh, which is what you see right now and talking with the teams. Someone told me, hey, check the, the Lego movie. That there's a similar character. Uh, which I did and ain't that funny like it's it's uh it's 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 uh it's very similar indeed so uh I then did my researches um <laughs> just wanted to show that a bit more uh I then did my researches um and figured out how to walk with a peg leg um so you see this guy had to make this cool thing. To actually simulate that. Uh, and then, um, oh, sorry, I need to play this video, but I'm blocked. How do I? Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Sorry. Um, so turning around the character in T pose and listing his his uh, strength and means of attack can help. So then I explore ideas. Uh, I do very quick thumbnails. That's the only one I could I could dig out <laughs> for this character, uh, which are not gonna be. They are in the game almost, but uh, that's not gonna be the animation I'm gonna show you anyway. So in parallel, I also do pose research uh, in Maya. Um, sorry, I didn't have I didn't have that file, but uh, I retest, test uh, like I mentioned in that stage as well. And once I have a close a closer idea, I can shoot reference. Uh, I'm gonna show you reference. No one laughs. Okay, that's okay. No one's laugh. <laughs> um, so yeah, me trying to be a giant. Uh, necrofix colossus so uh, yeah uh, a quick word on how i use reference uh, i shoot i never copy my reference 101 i mean judging by this reference really i shouldn't <laughs> in fact i don't spend a lot of time shooting or editing stitching together my references and stuff like you can see sometimes when animators do acting uh, pieces um, here what you see are just exploration of me trying to get the feeling of the body mechanic uh, of this character. Anyway, next slide, quick, quick. No, nope, not it again. Uh, also, I tend to do this for giants. Um, yeah, I do very quick hips only uh, or toy-like uh, pass. Like if you were a kid playing with the toy and, and put it in the game. So this was testing the locomotion speed. Um, and this was an attack. Uh, so this sounds a bit dumb, but it can quickly help, uh, at least can quickly help me. Like uh, doing this, I will get a first feeling for my character in the game. So right now this is a Maya play blast, but doing this will definitely help getting a sense of the scale, the speed, the timing, the collision box size, etc. in game. So uh, doing this is very, very quick, obviously, but that helps, uh, can help. And then I do really rough blocking. So obviously, if I want to be able to test all I have in mind and only keep the, the, the things that work best, I cannot spend a lot of time blocking. So major keys and timing first, I tend to avoid stepped for my blockings. Um, I actually think no one in our animation team really blocks in, in stepped. Uh, but the, I guess, as always, it's, it's, it's case by case. But as we are mainly doing action stuff, blocking in spline makes the most sense. Um, as straight away you've got a good sense of timing uh, if you squint your eyes and, and look back <laughs> and zoom back but yeah um, and this is the second pass animation unpolished as you can see there are no secondary animation uh, I can't remember if I did that or if Spence did that but um, anyway uh, this is the final version so uh, yeah this one was made by Spence. Um, so that was my, my progression shot. And now uh, I'll talk a little bit on some examples, but um, you have to keep in mind that with the time 
I've got. Um, I can only give you rule of thumbs for a few units types, so uh, let's do it. So I'll mainly talk about creatures, lord, heroes, uh, or basic ground infantry. Um, uh, so, like in idols, um, avoid repetitions. Try to show character. Try to say, okay, I've got three idols to really show who uh, he or she is. Um, so here you can see some great. Uh, hand key work from uh, Jay. Um, then I add uh, two more to just have him or her um, live. Um, you know, breathing, looking around, etc. And when you do breathing idols, uh, uh, play with the breathing pattern too sometimes. Um, uh, and a quick tip would be if your idols feels too repetitive, try longer idols that can help sometimes um also not gonna lie and it's pretty obvious but of course more files more idols will help uh, especially especially um uh, when you have to animate a unit of 150 people <laughs> so uh really the, the the rules mostly are the same although here you will mainly be looking at formation and what type of unit uh you're dealing with so are they disciplined are they wild uh you you're going for the overall look at this stage um and obviously quite a different feel here and um yeah there you go look how much contrast there is right now the top line are different idols. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I mean when dealing with a lot of stuff. So for attacks, um, avoid repetitions, uh, of course. Uh, instead, show originality and use uh, hard eats and, uh, and badassery, if you can. Uh, basically, good ideas. <laughs> also, remember the constraint we talked about earlier? Well, we have to at this stage. So uh, yeah, those are a few examples. Um, some more example on bigger stuff here. Okay, and for the death, um, so, um, oh, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, PowerPoint. Okay, I have to play them all one by one. So for the death, um, we've seen James Baxter talk recently in uh, in Move Summit in Edinburgh uh, before lockdown, uh, and uh, he was saying basically death scenes are are very fun, uh, and I think we can all agree we are having yeah a lot of fun trying to make them die like divas, and also I think one good tip is show the hurt and really show it to make a noticeable change uh in game uh, you know like a, a nice timing change um that helps uh again i think powerpoint i told you i was rubbish at powerpoint uh so a few more uh big at the top and at the bottom now uh you can see um that often how we treat infantry death kind of vanilla but really showing the hits uh so directional and a lot of variations uh there are more than i haven't captured but uh yeah just a few examples actually one of the uh, oh this sound this one one of the last uh, uh dlc uh, yeah obviously having sound the effects that that also completes the 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 animation itself to yeah to make it better like in movies <laughs> okay um so now locomotion so give your locomotion cycle some great details uh flavor and, and uniqueness locomotion are really awesome to show character as you all know oh you should uh, and uh, on top of our locomotions, uh, we can basically add what we call uh, locomotion idols. So those are very quick spli splices of the head, um, in, in this example, of the head looking around, 
chest rotation. I don't think in that one, but yeah, we can hide variations, etc. Whatever we think to create more details when they walk, and in game it gives that results. So try to pay attention to the the mount. So you see, they are all playing the same uh, walk, but they have those little idols to make it look like a bit more organic. Um, yeah, it helps. Uh, and uh, perhaps I should have started with <laughs> with this, but uh, yeah, uh, that's usually what we start with actually is stand pose. A good stand pose says a lot on a character, so think it through, but like not too much because it still needs to be very appealing at, at a first glance. Um, yeah, dancing Wozag in the middle, uh, the top row is, is a bit distracting, but it's it's awesome. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, here you go. A uh, quick meme I worked on. <laughs> I love the what production thing we do. All right. And lastly, um, part four, uh, the mandatory tips. Some are uh, mine, some are tips I was given from colleagues or mentor, etc. But, um, yeah, be nice. No one... No one wants a nice in their team. I'm telling you that, and it's it's a pretty small industry, so don't lie, don't steal. Be nice, <laughs> uh, be positive, show enthusiasm, be willing to learn, uh, accept feedback, uh, and uh, you should welcome it, especially when when you are a junior. Um, be willing to share, uh, work hard. Sometimes extra work is expected. It's it's a line of job where you have to prove that you can take more responsibilities or work on, on more important stuff if you if you want to. Uh, know your limits also. Uh, the work-life balance is, is super important. Um, stay excited and maintain your level of inspiration. This is very important. Uh, you, you'll never stop learning in animation. So never think you've figured it out, you figured it all out. Um, if, if that happens and you start feeling too comfortable, it, it can happen. Uh, s try to, yeah, seek discomfort again uh, by, you know, tackling something new that you have never done or something that scares you, uh, um, something like this. Uh, and finally, obviously, an obvious one, practice, practice, practice. Um, and um, that's it. I can give a few tips on demo reels as well. Um, uh, what I will say though is like, it's it's only um, uh, it's it's only what works for us. Uh, the tips I'm gonna give. So if you want to apply for a company that is making a different game or another company, uh, my tip might not be relevant. But um, so that's very personal. Each recruiter, I think all person that you know are in charge of hiring members of their team are looking for something different so uh, yeah it also depends on the timing of when you apply it's it's basically yeah uh luck but if you show cool stuff you shouldn't have any issues to get a job so yeah basically i want to see who you are so first tip like show who you are and please stop showing you can copy frame by frame a live reference um although sometimes it looks impressive this doesn't tell us much about you about that you know creativity isn't necessarily your forte perhaps um put some cool stuff show cool ideas um be innovative and uh, have fun don't worry too much about how the video looks itself uh rendering etc uh, as long as it's clean you can just put play blast that's absolutely fine uh, again, uh, if you manage to sell a, an awesome play blast, boring, gray animation, uh, then, yeah, I mean, yeah, once you will have texture, VFX and sound, uh, it's, it's only going to be better. So yeah, don't overlook locomotion. In my opinion, you can definitely put some locomotion in there if, uh, you don't make it boring. So try stuff, you know, play with different toys. Um, uh, yeah, th this is a stick. <laughs> A walking stick. How 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 would a walk look if your character would carry you know a big flag, or just a sword? The weight is much different, obviously. So this is the thing I'm trying to tell you is like when we do when we think about especially when we are learning, 
uh, we think about uh, walk cycles or run cycles as boring and have to has to work mechanically. Yes, but there's also so much more stuff to play with. Like if you think of the Hell Pit Abomination, for example, much much different than the Necrofex walking or the giant walking, the lizard and stuff. So there are a lot of toys to play with. That's what I'm trying to to say here with this weird little uh, infographic <laughs> uh, graphic rather so yeah maybe the character has a wheel remember the help it abomination like I said never really thought of that before but it was a lot of fun to think of it and make it work so yeah have fun basically try insects they are not that hard by the way and they look usually cool play with different animals too different gates um make a hop cycle feel good that's also something that's that's uh that's satisfying to do uh yeah try different wings too if you want to make your thing fly um i don't know what that drawing is i heard someone quite uh high ranked once say um talking about an, an animator like hey if he, if he can do an attack he can do a walk or run cycle and to me this is not true because you you can't cheat when uh when when doing a locomotion cycle and especially for a game where the animator doesn't know how the player is going to see your animation because yeah we are not in control of the camera um and usually as well in game rigs i mean it, it's still true for us um we don't have squash and stretch for example so it has you can't you have a way of cheating but not so not so many <laughs> uh so yeah it, you have to be yeah you have to master this and yeah it has to feel correct mechanically and and to feel correct it has to be correct there's there's no other way around um like i said you've, you've got a little bit of leeway but ultimately not that much so Test also big and small, as you perhaps saw, there are a lot of uh, implication testing that. Um, yeah, play with scale, uh, different weight. Um, uh, this ugly drawing is a dude on a scale. <laughs> Finding the perfect weight, like when you're fine tuning um, an animation to, you feel that you are not, or when you ask feedback, people are not telling you that, uh, you know, this creature is heavy enough or something like that. When you are fine tuning weight, you learn a lot. Um, so yeah, find the perf perfect weight. Um, it's really gratifying. And of course, try four legged uh, creature or animals, uh, play with their gaze, like, like I mentioned earlier. What about two handed weapons? Like those are actually quite tricky uh, to master. Um, work on how your animation flow in doubts it's always better to have something smooth it's easier to add to add choppiness than uh, to it than, than the invert I find um, yeah you get my point there, there, there's a lot to learn and, and play with so uh, locomotion locomotion isn't boring and it isn't easy at all uh, to really master um, so a few times I've seen animators being comfortable doing cool action stuff like cool attacks and things but struggling to nail to really basically control uh what they want to do with the locomotion cycle and yeah locomotion now no jokes uh, know your body mechanic and experiment with it uh, it can be a lot of fun as well and frustrating too but uh, yeah um so uh sorry for the the long rant on locomotion but uh, yeah uh lastly yeah you can make it short that's okay honestly if i see a reel longer than one minute 30 i'm expecting that from someone very experienced that has a lot to show um no toilet shot as well please <laughs> again from experience uh not that i did one but we reviewed a few and it's usually almost straight a no so yeah uh, so yeah basically uh, chill have fun and do your demo reel so um, that's it um, thanks a lot for uh, for watching this uh, I hope it went smooth uh, feel free to add me on LinkedIn or Twitter and uh, lastly a big shout out to my team and CA in general but uh, yeah the team is a super uh, talented and creative bunch I'm I'm secretly a fan of their work and I am so grateful to have them in, 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 in our team in my team so yeah um, I really wish I was able to show you what we are cooking right now uh because again we've we've leveled up so uh i can't unfortunately but stay tuned um that's it <laughs>